All right, so we are off, and uh, we are heading to, I don't even know. I don't think anybody knows exactly where we're heading. Mus Muscadabit? Is that? I've never been, but uh, this is uh, a ride with four, it's four of us, and uh, this is almost the group, because there's one more, but I think he had to, uh, he was working today. One more person that uh, is coming with us, but this is like the group that's going to be going to uh, Sturgis. So that's super fun. Anyways, uh, it is currently actually it's not that it's warmed up when we pulled into the guy in the front, Joel, his place. Uh, it was 11 degrees, so a little. I see a little cool, but it's warmed up to 14 degrees right now, so that is excellent. 14, even though it's three degrees, it's a uh, it's an excellent three degrees. It definitely helps getting uh, I don't know from that 10 10 till 10 degrees to 15 degrees is a substantial change in regards to how warm it is outside. I find. Anyways, uh, as you may be able to see for if you watch one of my uh, past videos, uh, my handlebars are looking better. There's not just floppy cables all over the place. You may be able to see that I've got my uh, CarPlay thing on there. I've got my uh, Insta360 X3. I've got my quad lock on there right now. And uh, it's not like a, a jumble of cables. I actually got this. You may be able to see it down here. Um, this was a little cable management holster, cable management cable. I don't know what you want to call it. That normally, I guess you would use for like uh, managing like your computer cables or you know your home home video home home stereo cable so that it looks a little prettier, right? So I was like, hey, I've got one of those. Uh, I've used some of it before, but. Uh, I had a whole bunch left and I had enough left that it was enough for me to run it down from this all the way down to uh, where all the cables kind of go so it has this little weird little U thing going on right down there but that's not a big deal you know I could uh, I'm sure I could even get that tightened up or tied to the the actual handlebars to get it better in place but yeah, it's all it's all running good. My handlebars are, uh, as far as I can tell, exactly where I want them to be, and uh, that is good. Uh, so far, so far this year, what am I at? Uh, I've probably put between 800 and 900 kilometers on. So far, that's good. It uh, doesn't take long to, you know, almost put a thousand kilometers. I'll I'll break a thousand kilometers today. So far this season which may not seem like a lot but when you know you really only got your bike out and the weather's not been great so far this year uh, I'm I'm down with uh, that one of the things I went out with uh, Dave which is the one riding the uh, Indian pursuit in front of me I went out with Dave just the other day and uh, by the time I got home I was like oh my back was sore and I didn't feel it when I was riding, but by the time uh, later on that e that evening or the next day, I can't remember now, both my like my hands and my wrists were sore. I think it's you know you you spend four or five months not doing this, right? Not having your hands on the bars, and all of a sudden you're just like, yep, yeah, yeah, that's a uh, that's not feeling great, and I was just like, oh, I have definitely. You know what is it and now it's middle of april late april middle of april i can't remember uh so may june really it's it's like two and a half months before we do a fairly good ride which is uh we're going up to cabot trail from here to spend three days riding around that so getting up to cabot trail you know not that big a deal it's like 400 kilometers something like that I think uh, and then we'll be riding around that area for a day or so and I'll put it on a month, another probably five or six hundred kilometers 
and then the ride home, which is another, you know, 400, 500 kilometers, somewhere in that range. So again, you know, you'll easily put on a 1,500 to 2,000 kilometers, probably depending on uh, how much time you actually want to go out and ride or how much time you feel like hanging around the hotel and just kind of uh, hanging out with a whole bunch of people. Because that one's actually an Indian rally that we're going to. So that one should be fun. Uh, but those aren't those aren't those aren't long days by any means right 400 kilometers that's a uh, something you can leave for sure in the morning and be at your de destination by mid-afternoon so that's that's okay that's not horrible by any means uh but july 31st uh we leave for sturgis the five of us um so this four and one more and uh that's where you know you have to have your body in a bit better condition at least condition that you're used to sitting you know sitting upright like this sitting being comfortable make sure your shoulders i'm gonna have to start i think i'm gonna start doing like shoulder stretches and like push-ups and things like that just to strengthen my my uh well it probably strengthens your core a little bit but also strengthens your arms and your shoulders I think uh, that's that's kind of important because uh, I know if you luckily for us we're not this isn't a trip that we're taking like June first or you know something like that where you're just like oh no I don't have any time at all to get myself in any kind of riding shape you know so uh, I think that's going to be uh, something that I just kind of need to do for sure or if not uh, it's it's not going to be it's not going to be great uh you know the one thing you don't want is the first the first day in your trip that you're like oh that hurts and then the next morning you get up and you're like oh yeah no i can't uh i can't i can't ride and you have three more weeks of riding in front of you so you know it's uh important i think to make sure that you're uh ready for that getting yourself ready so lots of hopefully lots of little day ride now there's something that I was going to talk to these guys about just to see if they were looking maybe interested in it before that trip in Nova Scotia they have there's a website called uh, the, the Nova Scotia four corners something something like that and what's what it is is it basically has these four different spots that you have to get to during a riding season and one is like at the very tip of Cape Breton, uh, somewhere like I think it's in uh, Meat Cove. Uh, there's one like as far like southeast, I think it is, or as far east possibly. I think it may be just south of Sydney. So there's one there that uh, is one of the other spots. So that's you know that's that's one to get to. And then they have four on the west. So one that's out somewhere I think it's on what's called the I think it's called the Digby Neck or something like that I'm not 100% sure what it's called but something out there and then I think they have one out around Yarmouth so you have to it's almost like doing an iron butt right where you have to actually get uh, a, a gas receipt and a picture by the uh, location so like uh, Meat Cove there's a uh, like a campground and where you would normally book in for the campground, you have to take a picture of you and your motorcycle there. So it has to be you and your motorcycle. It can't be just you, because of course it could you could have drove there, drove there in a car, right? So they want to make sure it's you and your motorcycle are there. So those would be good rides, you know, because they're especially the ones here on the west. They're good, you know, just nice, nice. I don't want to say long, but easy day rides. You can easily probably get out to those. You know, and they're probably about five, six hundred kilometers, so that wouldn't be too bad. Uh, the actual ones out to like Cape Breton Cabot Trail, those are longer because they're probably about five hundred, maybe six hundred kilometers each way. So you'd have to go out there. You'd probably, you know, get out there, leave early, right, and then take your picture, do whatever have a bite to eat, fill up with gas, and then start heading home. So that's a that's a leave early day trip and get home probably fairly late. And you want to make sure you do that on a nice day because you definitely don't want to be pushing, you know, a thousand kilometers if you don't need to. Not that you couldn't, but uh, in, in cold or rain. So 
maybe those might be something to think of they're, they're a good way to you know blow the cobwebs out of your bike and make sure everything is kind of running good and all this kind of stuff now the other thing that uh, I actually just ordered is um, again it was well primarily for the trip number one is I ordered some rock straps so uh, I am bringing uh, even though this bike has uh, a ton of storage I am going to be bringing at least one bag uh, and that bag of course is going to be something that I'm going to carry like uh, clothes in so this makes it easy for me to be able to bring it into the hotel at night instead of having to be like okay how do I get this all out of my trunk or whatever it is so so that uh, the rock straps are going to be used to tie those down so I'm going to bring up I'm hoping to bring up like a actual like a nice bag but I'm also going to bring a dry bag with me uh, you'll see this on the other channel Kemimoto actually sent me one of their uh, dry bags so I'm going to try it out see how it straps now they I believe it comes I believe maybe I may be right right I might be wrong it may come with those own straps but I think rock straps will be better just they're just rock straps are kind of some of the best straps you can get um, and I ordered uh, a, another set of tires so I had ordered you guys may have heard me say it is I had ordered a pair of Shinko's uh, I'm trying to remember what tires they were um, anyways they were there like 809s or and a 777 for the front and 809s for the back one was like a a, a touring like they're both like touring tires so my thought was oh i'll be able to get some good kilometers on them but doing some further research after i actually ordered them i realized that most people are saying that you will get i don't know maybe you know you might be able to stretch them out to get about 10,000 kilometers. Uh, I need to stretch out to way more than 10,000 kilometers, you know, uh, since our ride is, it's like 15,000 without doing any riding around Sturgis. So the thought is we'll probably hit somewhere around, probably closer to, you know, 18 to 20,000 kilometers. So uh, if I want tires to be able to get put on before I leave, and make it all the way back i need uh, a, a long a long endurance tires right so i ended up ordering because uh, i found a company uh, royal royal distributing i think they're called um, and they had a no no gst sale so i was like okay that saves a little bit of money so i ended up buying a set of Metz, metzler 888 uh, ultra marathon marathon ultras I can't something like that so those are coming uh, I literally ordered them on day one and day two I got the email saying they are shipped so they should be here possibly uh, this is what day is it today this is Sunday so I'm guessing they'll be here sometime this week it looks like they were uh, leaving from Mississauga Ontario and coming here so my guess is a couple of days for them to get here but everybody says again i think uh, dave said his his wife has them on her bike and they did across canada across cross country tour and she got she got back on her bike and she has a uh, indian classic i think it is i can't remember what i think it's a classic and uh anyway she, they got back and she's like oh they're only like like half worn so that is a positive for sure that i that i, I i'm a, i'm liking now not to say that i'll get as much mileage necessarily as she did because uh, this bike definitely is probably a bit heavier than her bike so i would think that just because of the weight i'll probably chew through it a bit more but the nice thing is is that i'll get back with those tires and if they last me through the year cool if not when i get back uh i can i can throw the shinkos on because i'll have a brand new set of shinkos just sitting in the shed waiting wait to be used so that is also excellent you know you gotta you gotta love having a set of tires just waiting for you and 
Because again, victory, right? You just one of the things that you don't want is anything to go wrong during your trip because finding parts is not as easy as going to an Indian dealer or going to a Harley dealer or going to a Yamaha dealer or whatever it is and being like, hey, I need this. They'd probably be like, well, we don't have them, so we have to order them. Uh, so I'm trying to get anything that I may need or any work that needs to be done, make sure it's done before I go. So I did uh, buy myself some extra brake pads because again, you know, if we're putting 15, 20,000 kilometers on, there could be a good chance that I'll need uh, need uh, brake pads. So uh, I may, I'm not 100% sure, if, depending on the state of my brake pads right now, I'll either put them on before I leave or, or at least have them with me so that if I have to go somewhere to get them put on, I, ha I have them, right? So that's good. Uh, I don't know if I said it in the other video as well. So this right here, the this little the shifter, um, that is, it's a little loose and uh, reading up on it, uh, it is something that victories have a tendency that to loosen is because they have these I don't know what they are. They're, they're bushings, but they're whatever they're made. It slowly wears over time. So what happens is they, the bushing is loosened and then you get this play. Uh, so what, what happens is over time, the bushings can wear so much that they end up just giving out and uh, then you don't have a shifter. So that's, that's no good. So I ordered some brass ones so I got those, so those have to go on with my heel shifter. But you know what, honestly, I don't even know, like if I wouldn't have bought the heel shifter, I'd probably be okay. As much as I like a heel shifter, I've been you know, riding so far this year not having the heel shifter, and it's fine, but I have it sitting in the trunk, it's doing its job, and uh, I might as well get it put on. It takes like three seconds, especially when uh, they're gonna be taking all that stuff off anyway to put the uh, brass bushings in, so very very fun now I don't have any idea where we are and that's that's definitely the fun part of going on a ride over this area uh, you guys can see my car play right here uh, where am I I don't know but I'm, I'm here that's where I am make sure I break and oh we've cooled down a little bit down to 12 by the water you know, whenever you get by the water, you definitely cool down. But definitely a nice, a nice area. I find, I find in, uh, again, in Nova Scotia, it's just, it's hard not to find roads that are decent. You may find roads that are really nice and curvy, but also really nice and bumpy. So it's nice to ride with these guys that are just, they know a little bit more. So what roads are going to be okay and what roads are going to be just, you know, curvy but crap because uh, I was riding the other day and the road was really nice and I came around a corner and it wasn't it wasn't like uh, like a pothole it was just this weird warpy thing and I came around it and you know you come around the corner and you're you're leaned over quite a bit and it it kind of it kind of threw me because normally you're like you want to straighten the bike up going over or something like that but it was just like I don't know, I don't know like a big whoop, whoopie do and uh, that was something I would have liked to have known was there. <laughs> Not that maybe even these guys would have known that. They could have, that could have happened over the winter. Who knows? Anyways, uh, I'm going to stop talking for a little bit. Again, I think we're going to somewhere in Muscadabit. I think these guys are going to grab something to eat. Uh, I may depend, you know, again, depending on uh, if they, they have something that's... Uh, food friendly for me, you know, if all those fails, I'm sure they have something I can get, a salad or something to, to munch on. Anyways, you guys can enjoy some of the uh, scenery while I continue on my ride. Oh yes. So I have been to this area before and this beach here, which, you know, very first time I came to Nova Scotia, right or Lawrence Town I, I didn't realize that they had beaches like this now this time of year the water is going to be uh, very much on the cold side but they do surfing here this is a surfing beach so I don't know if you'll necessarily be able to see anything but 
some good waves come in. You might be able to see that out there. Good waves come in. Uh, they have a little, like a surfing, I think like a surfing school here, back here, for those that want to learn how to surf. And uh, I, I came down here, Mary and I came down here. Uh, I was actually, I think I was testing a lens just to see how it did. It was right up here, actually. See the waves? Oh, look how nice. Isn't that pretty? Come on now, that is super pretty, yes? No, is there anybody out there surfing? I don't know. Anyways, uh, there were people surfing because uh, it was, I don't want to say it was warm, but it was warm enough for people to be in the water, I guess. And uh, it was, I got some fantastic photos of some people surfing. Now, not a lot of people, I did notice, because it was a lot of beginners, I think, not a lot of people that were actually uh, getting long runs in, but who cares? Still super cool. So if you're ever in this area and it's a nice day out and it's like a day that you might get good waves, come down here because you may be able to get some photos of some people surfing, which is, which is very cool. Nova Scotia, surfing. Who would have figured, right? Oh yeah. All right, well, I, we're, we're still driving, so. Um, we'll keep we'll keep keep yammering I guess or I won't yammer you guys can just hear some writing it really is there's a surfer see a surfer maybe you saw it I don't know it really is pretty out here this part part of Nova Scotia it's like uh, there's definitely like a rocky beach but there's also some sandy beach so up by where I live, which is actually off the Bay of Fundy, uh, it is rocky beach or muddy sandy beach. It's not that, you know, uh, southern, you know, Mexico kind of sand. It's like muddy sand. So that's, uh, that's fun, I guess. This area here is so, look at all the nice houses on the hill. Again, I haven't been here. This is, this is pretty cool. Always nice going to new places where you haven't been. Look at those houses up there. Those are, those are snazzy. I like those. I like that house too. Just plain, but I like the color. Yeah, very cool. I think I'm going to stop this camera for now because uh, it's probably got lots on there and uh, I think I think that will probably be it for this video guys uh, it's probably a long video but hopefully you guys hung around enjoyed some of the scenery etc etc uh, one of the things that I'm going to reach out as you can tell I'm shooting with Insta360 Insta cameras uh, one of the things that uh, I've been doing is I have this Ace Pro right here, uh, and it's Bluetooth to my intercom. But what it doesn't do, at least I, I can't seem to find a setting, and if it does do it, please someone let me know down below, or I'm going to have to reach out to Insta360 and see if they know, or if they can maybe add it. I, you know how when you have a phone and you have like a Bluetooth speaker or something like that, and you you turn your phone on and if it sees the speaker it just says hey I'm gonna connect to that right I'm like, that's good I've connected it before I'll connect to it again which is awesome now on an Insta360 camera you have to go in and tell it that you want it to connect to Bluetooth so if I power this off and then turn it back on I have to use the screen to go in and tell the camera to connect to my headset again uh, which is pretty much next to impossible when you're riding now it probably wouldn't be as big of an issue here like I probably could do it not that I would want to do it while I was riding but uh, when it's on your chin like this it would be nice to have a feature that actually says you know 
uh, auto connect. Just turn turn that feature on. And if I don't want that feature, I can say don't auto connect, right? So look at that. Uh, hoping that that's something maybe they can add because I wanted to auto connect. I don't want to have to put it on. I want to be able to put this on, turn it on, and then because of the settings, when when my headset is on, it automatically looks for it and says, "Oh yeah, no, we're good." So my headset would come up and say, "You know, device connected." I'm like, "Cool," but for this, it doesn't say device connected until I force it to. So I, I'm hoping I can somehow get that to work because right now I don't want to turn the camera off because then I'll lose my microphone. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyways, uh, that's enough of that. Uh, we will see you guys next video. We are going somewhere to eat, and uh, I'm going to stop talking. All right. I'm out. Later.